So here's a really interesting fragrance, especially if you're looking for something on the darker side of things this season. This one by Andrea Mack is called Coven. I'm really excited to share my thoughts on this fragrance with you very shortly, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on this fragrance that has soil, green grass, there is whiskey, there's some woods. It's a really interesting, dark, spicy type of a fragrance. And of course, it has some other really quirky ingredients in here that my nose is picking up on, so I'll be sure to share those shortly. But before I begin the video, I do wanna mention that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and also please give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It would really, really mean a lot to me. So this fragrance is available at Twisted Lily. They are an amazing store that carries a ton of niche brands and they have a really wide selection of hard to find fragrances and they ship your products super fast. They also make samples. So it's convenient if you're interested in trying a fragrance based off of the description, but you don't wanna to commit to a full bottle. I'm gonna leave all of the links down below just to make it more accessible for my subscribers. So here we have a fragrance that has grass and soil. And of course you're expecting this to be earthy, but there's also whiskey and there's some wood. So it has a bit of a darker personality to it, which I think is really interesting. But how is the whiskey accord and the earthy tendencies going to mix together? So it's a very interesting endeavor there. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on that in just a little while. Let's start things off with a quick look at the presentation first. So the first thing that I got, as soon as I smelled this fragrance, in my impression, was something earthy, right? And of course, you look at grass and soil and that's all well and good. I thought to myself, is there something like vetiver happening in here? And it kind of reminds me just a little bit of Girl by Pharrell Williams, which was a collaboration with Comme des Garçons. I don't know if you can still find that fragrance anywhere, but I did purchase it when it first came out and it has this sort of dry, earthy patchouli ingredient in here that is really, really nice. I would say patchouli vetiver. So it's this combination of two green earthy ingredients and it says green grass. And it's interesting because grass has been interpreted in so many different ways. You have grass by Gap, the clothing brand. Uh, you also have 212 by Carolina Herrera. I think that's the name of it with the silver bottle and the blue lettering on the front. And that one also gave off a grassy vibe to people. But I've smelled so many other fragrances that have a soil accord or a soil note or soil tincture or geosmin or one of those ingredients that smell like dirt in them. And they smell explicitly like dirt. It's almost like, you know, you're running in the yard and you fell down and face first, you got a mouthful of dirt. That's not what's happening here. And I'm, I'm smelling it time and time again, and I'm trying to see if I can pick up on it, but it's actually, it doesn't remind me of, it smells earthy, but it doesn't remind me of soil, which I think is really interesting. So here's the thing, it does smell like peat, right? So it smells peaty, which is whiskey, right? So you think of the peat and you think of, you know, the alcoholic prowess and you smell it and it's kind of sharp and astringent. And, you know, you have all of these spices that are used in the fermentation of several alcoholic spirits like whiskey. And I am getting that. I am getting this spicy personality, which, you know, under different marketing, it could have said leather accord and it would have been a different interpretation of the fragrance altogether. But I really like what they did here because we're dealing with a fragrance that is dry, it's professional, it's eccentric, but it's also enigmatic. And you know, it's kind of hard to find that balance of something that is like, hey, I'm here, I want you to notice me, but I'm also very mysterious at the same time. It seems like those who convey mystery also tend to be those who are also aloof and they kind of do their own thing, mind their own business, but here we're actually dealing with something that seems to be um, a balance between gregarious and enigmatic, which is not found too often in the perfume industry. This stuff is really, really, really interesting. At, uh, at one point, I also wanted to think that there's a bit of a tea quality in here. You know, it, like a very dry herbal kind of a tea vibe. So tea, earthy, vetiver, I guess soil. I'm not sure if there's geosmin in here or something else contributing to that vibe, but it doesn't smell dirty in a literal sense. It's a really interesting fragrance. Woodsy, long lasting, mysterious, but again, it commands attention. 
Try Coven by Andrea Mack. All of the links are going to be down below. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, for me, this is unique. I've smelled a lot of fragrances with slightly similar note breakdowns, but the olfactive outcome is totally different. The overall smell, I think it's going to be a type of fragrance to cater to a specific taste. I also have Magma here, and this one is actually very much so on the fresh side of things, to the point where it kind of reminded me at times of like Sauvage Parfum right? So the step below elixir. And I was like, wow, this is really nice. It's going to be a compliment getter, so on and so forth. So Coven is certainly the more daring of the two, but try it for yourself. Longevity is 10 hours on skin. Projection was surprisingly quite nice, despite the absence of citrus. It did really well for the first hour of application. It radiated at an arm's length. It became an elbows length scent right around hour seven, a skin scent right around hour 10. Versatility, I think this one is perfectly unisex. I can see some people arguing that it's masculine leaning, but I do think it's unisex. I think this one is great for somebody who is perhaps a little bit older and has more experience in dealing with niche fragrances. Great for the colder weather. And I think you can wear this one casually or formally. I do love the shape of the bottle if we're talking about the presentation. And the cap here kind of looks like the Deadpool logo, which is kind of cool. I really do enjoy the aesthetic of the brand and it's something different. And we always welcome something that's different and original and unique and a novel experience. My final verdict on COVID is it's an interesting, dry, woodsy, earthy, peaty, mossy type of a fragrance. So if you have the opportunity to check it out, if you like earthy, mossy, green types of fragrances, and don't worry, it doesn't smell explicitly of soil, at least not to my nose, at least when compared to a bunch of other fragrances that I've tried, like Bat by Zoologist, which is very much so a soil smelling fragrance. Try this. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. It's available at Twisted Lily. All the links are going to be down below once again. I hope you took something of value from today's video. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell and give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys and we'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.